Hi there, welcome back again to our course in ABE 161. In this video, we'll be moving on to our next topic on beam stirrups. In the previous video, we we discussed details and also discussed the code provisions regarding the flexural reinforcements. Recall that a beam, when subjected to flexural loadings, they develop um, internal internal stresses or let's say they develop uh, or they carry internal shear shear force and bending moments so the shape of this bending uh, this bending moments and this uh, shear diagram they actually depend on the loading conditions and as well as these boundary conditions or the supports to the type of supports Okay, so in the previous videos, we discussed the flexural reinforcements. Okay, so um, we we discussed the um, the code provisions and we did calculations regarding this um, this flexural reinforcements. Okay, so in this video, we're we're we are going to talk about the shear reinforcements so that's with regard to the shear force okay, so if you recall in the um, in our topic in building constructions that or even in your previous courses that for a reinforced concrete beams they actually have stirrups so stirrups are the ones they're actually the ones that resist or their reinforcements for resisting shears and torsion. Okay, so here we have these flexural reinforcements. And this one, okay, uh, they're called stirrups. Okay, so the top the top bars, if the beam is singly reinforced, then it means that the top bars just acts as a hanger bar or hanger bars but if you take the let's say the capacity of these uh, compression reinforcements then that's going to be what we call as the doubly reinforced beams okay so now let's discuss this stirrup okay so stirrup they are still uh, reinforcements reinforcement designed to resist shear and torsion um, torsion stresses in a structural member okay so the conf uh, the configuration of these um, stirrups can be uh, single leg or double legs or multiple leg types okay so for a single leg um, for example we have these beams or let's say this uh, this shape okay so a single leg syrup will look like this then for a double leg can look like this Okay, so let's say here is our uh, flexural reinforcements and then our uh, our hanger parts. Okay, so this this is what we call as the double deck. That's gonna be open type. Okay, another one that's also typical could be something like this. Okay, so that's a double leg, but it's a closed type, and still there. There are still many others, um, other stirrup configurations that can also resist or are configured to resist torsions and and some other uh, I don't know maybe some other details. Okay, so for a multiple leg type, it will look like this. Plus, okay, let me try it again. So. Of course, if you have a 
let's say a wider beam prob uh, probably then you you'll have a, a stir up configuration something like this okay so this is what we call as the multiple leg type okay so these two they're they're called double legs and this one is open and closed types open or sometimes they call it the u u shaped stirrups okay, and we have the single leg okay so there are still many other configurations um, you can just refer to the textbooks um, you can find other other configurations okay so now that's the stirrup configuration and we'll now move on to the stirrup spacings so typically let's say we have these um, columns okay so I have this exterior column and the interior and um, an exterior column Okay, so we have this longitudinal pars on top. Okay, and we also have longitudinal pars at the bottom. Okay, so that's our flexural, uh, let's say flexural reinforcements. And in some designs, there could be extra pars, or it's also typical to have extra pars like this. Okay, and for I mean at the mid span we have an extra bars on top and of course if it's an interior column then this extra bar just have to be continuous okay so for our our stirrup we'll have something like this Okay, so we can notice or we can observe that for this um, that the stirrup spacing okay the stirrup spacing here at the mid span ah no no I mean at the support so at the support uh, we can we can observe that the stirrup spacing is uh, narrower. Okay, so let's just say spacing is narrower then here at the mid span okay we can notice that we have a wider spacing okay and then again at the support it's going to be uh, narrow spacing okay so the reason for this is actually the location of um, high shear so for um, let's say for a simply supported um, uniform uniformly loaded beams you notice that this uh, this would be the shear diagrams okay so the shear at the the shear at this the support is higher as compared to to the shears in the mid span okay so that's the reason for these narrow spacings so basically we can say that narrow narrow spacing means okay means high capacity or higher capacity and then uh, wider spacing means lower capacity Okay, so now let's talk about the beam behavior under shear loads. Okay, so consider a, a beam under two point loadings. Okay, so we have a beam, let's say it's a simply supported beam, and we have a two point loadings. So this is, um, you are already introduced to this type of loadings in our previous video or in our previous topics. Okay, so under these two-point loadings, 
we get a shear diagram some uh, something like this and then a movement diagram something like this okay so under under light loads if this is our beam okay we'll notice a um, gonna notice um, a, a shear of flexure cracks Okay, so the cracks will start from this bottom face and then it propagates towards the uh, the mid section. Okay, so as the load is further increased, it's gonna there's gonna uh, initiate a crack at this uh, web portion or in this mid portion of the beam, and once this um, diagonal cracks. Uh, is initiated then it's gonna lead to a sudden failure of it's going to produce or it's going to propagate the crack uh, in a sudden manner that will cause to the beam failure okay so it's gonna collapse okay so that's the reason why we need to um, to provide reinforcements because because uh, provisions of these shear reinforcements they actually uh, something like they delay the time for propagating these cracks so instead of having a sudden failure then this um, these shear reinforcements will will carry the stresses and uh, therefore prevent a, a sudden type of failure okay so probably this uh, this type of, of diagonal cracks they are related to the um, tensile stresses okay if you if we relate that to the topic on Moore's circle okay anyways um, Let's now move to the code provisions. Okay, so for the code provisions, recall that uh, we are still in LRFD approach for, I mean, when we're dealing with reinforced concrete and steel structures, we'll be using LRFD. And for timber, in the later part of, um, of the course, we're going to use the AA. ESD approach. Okay, so for the code provisions, recall that we have this LRFD expression that the nominal capacity or the factored capacity uh, actually, actually factored um, capacity or shear capacity the material should be greater than the factored loads. Okay, so this reduction factor is 0 0.75. As compared to, um, if we compare that to the flexural reinforcement, we have to determine the uh, tension. If I mean, we have to determine if the section is tension controlled, compression controlled, or in transition re region. But for um, in this shear reinforcement, we have a a direct value of 0 0.75 okay so we don't need to compute for anything okay so the reduction factor is 0 0.75 this v sub n this is the nominal shear capacity basically the v sub n is just simply the capacity of concrete the shear capacity of concrete plus the shear capacity of steel okay so uh, meaning that there is a a uh, substantial amount of shear capacity as compared to the tension capacity. Okay, so again, the the nominal capacity, the nominal shear capacity is the the sum of the sh shear capacity of concrete plus the shear capacity of um, of steel. Okay, so how do we compute this? Um, the this shear capacity of concrete. We have this equation in our lecture handout: 0 0.17 lambda 
b d squared of f c prime okay so this is this is a a constant here is 0 0.17 and this term this lambda term this is what we call as the modification factor okay so this modification factor unless otherwise stated we are going to use alpha is equal to 1 for normal weight concrete okay so normal weight concrete the lambda value is equal to 1 this B is the beam width and T is the effective depth okay so th the beam width and the effective depth they are in mm millimeter and the effective depth is also in millimeter and this square root of FC prime so FC prime this is uh, the the compressive strength of concrete and that's in megapascals okay so now let's move on to this shear capacity of steel so for the shear capacity of steel you have this equation a v f y d times n okay so what is this a v so a v is the shear area uh, or let's say the area of shear reinforcement shear uh, let's say area of shear reinforcements okay so what that means is for example we have a a single leg configuration stirrup configuration then av is equal to this bar diameter but if we have a double leg let's say we have a closed stirrup then av is equal to okay so you just have to cut a uh, let's say a section so at this at this uh, section or cut then what's the uh, exposed area of shear reinforcements so here we have two times the bar diameter now for multiple legs for example okay so if we have a multiple legs then that means that the shear area is equal to 4 uh, 4 AB okay so that depends upon your um, stirrup configuration okay then this FY this is actually the yield strength yield strength of uh, the shear reinforcement okay so if that's the yield strength then meaning the units would be in megapascals and N so n is the number of bars per beam depth okay so this n is actually for example if you draw this uh, side view of um of a beam and let's say this is our our effective depth d so at this effective depth d okay we'll transpose this distance along the horizontal okay so let's say at this at this distance okay so let's say at this distance d then how many stirrups are there okay so at this distance d how many stirrups are are there okay so this is related to the um, diagonal cracks that we had uh, discussed earlier okay so the n is basically you could solve that by um, by the d 
all over S. Okay, so D is the beam depth. And S is the spacing. Okay, so meaning the spacing from stirrup to stirrup. Okay, so let's say this is S, and then spacing to another uh, stirrup is uh, is S. Okay, so now let's move on to the minimum area. Okay, so AV minimum is the maximum of the two criteria so we have um, 0 0.062 square root of FC prime BS over FYT or 0 0.35 BS FYT okay so whichever is maximum that's gonna be the uh, minimum shear area okay so now let's talk about the derivations for the sign By the way, uh, like when we say the sign, we mean that um, we have to specify. Okay, so we have to specify the the stirrup spacing. However, you can also do analysis. Let's say you're given this um, this um, stirrup spacing configuration or layout. And then you just have to to analyze the capacity but but for us here we're going to um, we're going to try um, doing the uh, design for sure reinforcements so so for now let's derive um, let's do some derivations or let's uh, or more specifically, let's derive the uh, equations that we need for the spacings. Okay, so recall that the the factored capacity, shear capacity, should be greater than the factored loads, and this factored capacity is basically the um, shear capacity of concrete plus the shear capacity of steel. And then for for the steel we have this um, this equation okay so from this equation actually you can uh, you can obtain this uh, VVC plus uh, you can you can also obtain this shear area because typically um, you can specify or uh, let's say you can assume or you can specify a rebar diameter for the shear reinforcements. So if you have a diameter, then you have you have the area, and also you you'll have this um, this yield strength. Okay, and since you have this D, and also you have the loadings, uh, then you can what's or what's left in this equation is the spacings. So you can derive a minimum spacing okay VU minus V VC okay so this is now our equations for uh, this is now our equation for the minimum spacing okay so I'd like to highlight this this term right here this ultimate or ultimate or factored loads Okay, because there are situations wherein we are permitted to to use uh, and shear uh, reduction. Okay, so meaning that, for example, if this is our shear diagram, instead of using this uh, value, we can or we are permitted to use a reduced value. Okay, so this reduced value is at a distance. D. So sometimes, um, depending upon the problem, we'll be using uh, the entry reduction. So if if that's the case, then we're going to use this um, the symbol here. So V 
example, let's say, let's just put small letter D. Okay, so VD, meaning uh, it's the shear value at distance D. Now, the question is, do we have to provide this minimum uh, spacings all throughout the beam length? Okay, so for example, we have this um, the simply supported beam under uniformly distributed loads. Okay, and recall that we have this um, this uh, shear diagram. Okay, so are we going to put the stirrup spacing all throughout the length? Okay, so let's say this is our column of supports. So let's say we have this minimum spacing. Okay, so uh, we can actually understand this if we look at the uh, the shear regions. Okay, so in our lecture handouts we have three three regions. So I'll put it in um, in a table here. Section, and then we have conditions, and we have uh, remarks. Okay, so for section one, if the if the factored loads is greater than the uh, factored shear capacity of concrete, then uh, stirrups are required. Okay, and then for section two, if the factored loads is um, is is less than. Okay, so let me write first. Okay, so meaning if our factored loads is less than our factored shear capacity of concrete but greater than one half of PVC then we uh, this condition is said to um, to be this concrete carries shear so meaning even uh, even there's no reinforcements okay so the concrete can I mean the concrete alone can carry the shear then for the third section if the factored loads is less than one half of VVC then stirrups are not required not required okay so even though that um, let's say a section one section or let's say section one even though that ca that concrete carries or concrete alone can carry the shear force the code is still uh, still specifies to provide stirrups okay so just to ensure that um, gonna have safety uh, from sudden failures Now, if we convert this to a drawing, okay, so I'll try to enlarge the left portion. Okay, so let's say this is the center line. Okay, so if we plot the regions here, so let's say this is our V, uh, let's say this is our VU, or our factor close. then um, we'll have a VVC here shear capacity of, uh, of concrete and then we have a one half shear capacity of concrete okay so if we if we plot this uh, one half then what's going to be the distance here and then if you plot this VVC then what's going to be the um, distance here? So let's just say x. Uh, let's say x at 
um, at V V C and then here X at one half V V C. So you can see here that below this um, below this uh, shear value. Okay, so this will be the region. So below this shear value of one half V V C. So meaning that uh, no stirrups required. And that's going to be uh, region 3. Now for VVC, but then greater than 1 of VVC, so this will be the region. This is region 2, meaning that concrete carries shear. And here we have region one. So uh, any shear loads greater than this VVC, we're gonna need stirrups. Okay, stirrups required. Okay, but again, even though that concrete alone can uh, carry the shears, you're still gonna provide shear reinforcements here okay so now you can see that um, there's gonna be an idea or there's gonna be a concept of maximum spacing as well okay so we have a minimum spacing but we also have a maximum uh, spacing okay so I guess I'm running out of time and I'm going to continue this lecture in the next video